So, welcome to this class on uh, nuisance of human movement. So, the topic of today's class will be pre programmed reactions. So, what are these? We will have to see what these are and discuss that. So, this is part 1 and there will be one more part, I suppose. So, in today's class, we will be talking about pre programmed reactions. This uh, pre programmed reaction, a stretch reflex. What are the afferent sources or the possible afferent sources of uh, pre programmed reactions and uh, how does pre programmed reaction affect uh, move when a movement is happening. So, in other words a movement is happening a perturbation is applied and how does the pre programmed reaction react what is the direction in which it happens ok. We will discuss this and uh, in some relative detail. So, to begin with uh, so, we can consider movements as a continuum between two extremes and the one extreme you have monosynaptic reflexes or just plain reflexes. These are you know these are stereotypical or difficult to modify and uh, happen at a relatively low latencies less than or equal to 30 milliseconds latencies and uh, are usually not not responsive to the context. So, they are not contextual usually the response just exists uh, it need not be a perfect resolution of the problem. Uh, that is discussed the perturbation that is discussed. At the other end of the continuum you have voluntary movements these are uh, you know well tailored responses to perturbations there is something that is happening I know what is happening I have thought hopefully within that my rational mind as to the future course of action and I am reacting well considered decisions that manifest as movements are voluntary actions. Now, they are not stereotypical they are very very context specific extremely context specific in other words it will it will scale very nicely with the perturbation amplitude the response will scale very nicely with perturbation amplitude in other words depending on the perturbation the response will come. So, if the perturbation is of great amplitude the response will vary as in greatly when compared with the smaller uh, perturbation and so on. Usually, the delays are greater than 100 milliseconds actually around 200 milliseconds between 150 200 milliseconds very context specific and they are not stereotypical. And then in the middle you have several things you know here you have oligosynaptic here you have polysynaptic and then here after this this the this continuum becomes hazy it is not clear what is in the middle there are several things in the middle these are non reflexes non reflex non voluntary it is not clear what that is non reflex non voluntary because unless we define what is reflex and what is voluntary it is not clear for us to you know say classify these properly. But uh, there is a you know hazy uh, uh, space in this uh, continuum somewhere here after polysynaptic you have a special class of reactions called pre programmed reactions ok uh, that is what is. Uh, so, what is characteristic of these is that they have latencies between that of reflexes and uh, voluntary movements. So, around 80 milliseconds or between 70 to 100 milliseconds. So, an expectation would then be that ok you know if that is the case they are not going to be as stereotypical as the reflexes, but and they are also not going to be as tailored as the voluntary then it is going to be somewhere in the middle. Also the contextual uh, nature is going to vary and so on and so forth right. So, we will discuss that in the future slides. So, there are so many names for uh, pre programmed reactions they are also called as 
transcortical reflexes. Although the transcortical nature of uh, these reactions have been challenged, at least uh, now there is the in there are hypotheses that say that you know this is uh, this pre-programmed reactions involve a cortical loop, which is why they are called as transcortical reflexes. It's not clear what is meant by that. Transcortical means. By definition, we would say that these are not reflexes, they, they must be voluntary is what you would think. Cortical means thinking, ideation, thinking, something is going on, right. Yet, uh, we call this as transcortical reflexes. They have relatively long uh, latencies, so they are called as long latency reflexes or long loop reflexes. And they are of course, called as pre-programmed reactions as we are calling, we will call them as pre-programmed reactions for the rest of the class and during the rest of the course in future slides. Another name uh, is they are called as functional stretch reflex. It is an interesting name because it turns out that the response is dependent not just on context, but also on instruction. So, there is a functional relevance for this uh, uh, reflex because of the reason it is also called as functional stretch reflex. They are called as M2, M3 reactions or in some books and some papers and mm, some people you call this as M2-3 reactions or triggered reactions or people like me call this as canned reactions. So, uh, the, so that is like you know if I am expecting something to happen I have a canned response. So, you for example, somebody is coming to ask me for something I let us say you know I have a canned response as to what I should tell them. I give them the same response all the time, every time they come I give them the same response. They coming in and asking then uh, only acts as a trigger for my response, but the response itself is not going to vary. So, that is called as a canned response or canned reactions. Uh, there are several such names. Okay. We will call this as pre-programmed reactions for the purpose of this class and course. Okay. Suppose there is a perturbation that happens uh, you know at that time let's call this as time 0 let's call this as time 0 at around 30 40 milliseconds there is a first response that happens at around uh, you know 30 40 milliseconds there's a first response that happens and uh, that what is that that is m1 that is the analog of the H reflex R, more precisely the phasic stretch reflex R, the T reflex, is it not? That is the monosynaptic response, that is the phasic stretch reflex, okay. that is the T reflex and the mechanical analog of the H reflex, is it not? Whereas, after about uh, 70 80 milliseconds, for example. No. Two reactions happen, for one followed by the other, that are uh, you know corrective in nature. So these are called as pre-programmed reactions. This is actual data. This is a cartoon. This is real data. This is real data or representation of a real data from. Um, from an experiment involving biceps flexion I suppose. So, again note here, here we have called this as M2, M3, here we have called this as M2-3. Some That is because in some cases it turns out there are two distinct peaks like it is here, there are two peaks here and there are two peaks here. If there are two peaks these are M2 and M3. Sometimes what happens is that the reaction is like that the two peaks are not so distinguishable. In that case, these two are the two peaks, but they are M2 hyphen 3, they are sometimes not distinguishable and they are still called as pre programmed reactions that does not really you know affect them. So, that is and so this happens at 80 milliseconds, 70 to 100 milliseconds. And then note voluntary reaction will follow here is voluntary reaction, what is a time scale 150 milliseconds, it not or definitely greater than 100 milliseconds, it is about 150 milliseconds. Okay. Now, a node one does not affect the other, a perturbation will be immediately first responded to, there is a first response from T reflex and then followed by M 2 3 and then followed by voluntary reaction. You want 
the perturbation to be addressed properly, but yet you want to address some of these things immediately, some of these are very urgent, right. So, that those responses, so one followed by the other happen, first m 1, then m 2, 3, then voluntary, first m 1, then these, then voluntary in that order, all of them happen. Usually, well, you know, none of these are skipped, usually all these happen. Uh, in some cases voluntary reaction may not uh, be required because the, um, the reflex itself may be able to overcome the perturbation depending on the amplitude of the perturbation that might be sufficient. But in any case there will be some uh, if there is a requirement then voluntary reaction will happen in rarely voluntary reactions may not be required. Okay. So, this is pre programmed reaction that happens at around 80 milliseconds. What are the features of this? So, what are the features of this? So, let us remember. Uh, is this a, a stretch reflex? That is the question that you, one would ask because we defined early on uh, stretch reflex. What is stretch reflex? If the length of the muzzle changes, then change in the level of the length is responded to by a tonic stretch reflex, is it not? That is what we said. Uh, and uh, the first response we called as the phasic st stretch reflex and that is the transient of the tonic stretch reflex is a steady state. We said this in the previous class. Now, is it that the pre-programmed reaction is some form of a different name of a tonic stretch reflex is the question. The answer is actually no. In the previous slides, if you, if you see in the previous uh, class when we discussed tonic stretch reflex, the length is changing like that for example then the you know the tonic stretch reflex amplitude varies by that much for example, right. Then the length changes by a higher amount then the reflex amplitude also increases, right. However, pre programmed reaction that does not happen in pre programmed reactions what happens is the stimulus or perturbation amplitude has very little or no correlation with the response or in other words it is the presence or the absence of the stimulus that is detected. Is there a stimulus? Yes, then there is a response and that response is going to be canned. So, the perturbation actually acts as a switch as like an on off switch a trigger that is why it is called as a trigger reaction. So, if the perturbation is there then there is going to be a response the presence or absence of the perturbation alone right. So, uh, not just that the response happens in the case of a stretched muscle, in the case of a shortened muscle, in the case of a muscle whose length does not change all kinds of things happen. So, uh, because of this reason this is not a stretch reflex pre programmed reactions are not stretch reflexes and the amp especially because the amplitude of the response is independent of or very poorly correlated with the amplitude of the perturbation. Okay. In other words, this is the pre programmed re response represents a sort of non graded response to the presence or absence of the stimulus, like action potential. There is a, a per there is a perturbation, that perturbation is detected, there is a response. So, by the way that does not mean that the response is going to be stereotypical all the time there is still going to be context spe context specific uh, response in other words there can be multiple pre programmings that can be done depending on the stimulus which one of these uh, programs will have to be executed will have to be de decided I am speaking as if uh, this is a computer that is executing and saying there are multiple options or multiple actions that can be prepared and uh, which one of these is going to be executed depends on which trigger is pulled. Whichever trigger is pulled the response is going to happen, but pulling the trigger harder is not going to change the response. So, uh, in that sense it is different from action potential, action potential is always the same here there is going to be context specificity. Okay. So, in other words the perturbation only acts as a trigger very very critical very important distinguishing feature of uh, pre programmed reactions. Okay. Now, uh, a question is I have said that uh, these uh, responses are prepared in advance, who prepares this uh, uh, that is the question, who does that work. Um, so, here in this uh, slide we have said central command not clear what that means central could involve spinal cord, uh, 
brain stem motor cortex yes. uh, for the sake since we since I actually do not know what the answer is I am going to say that this is some higher center we like to think what that means is you know probably m 1 probably the um, excuse the terminology what I meant was probably the primary motor cortex or m 1 is a response probably we do not know uh, that is preparing the reaction, but that does not mean that remember if somebody is involved in the preparation of uh, the reaction that does not mean that during execution that has to be involved preparation can be made by this uh, part this loop then reaction can happen uh, later ok. Now, and what are these afferents? Now, that is another question because in the tonic stretch reflex in the previous cases in the monosynaptic reflex in the oligosynaptic polysynaptic reflexes we saw what the afferents are these are muscle spindles these are uh, Golgi tendon organs right if the muscle is stretched muscle spindles are going to fire if the muscle is uh, contracting Golgi tendon organs are going to fire you know causing respectively uh, you know a response through 1A and 1B or 1A interneuron 1B interneuron and so on and so forth we, we have seen that. What are the afferents in this case? I have just said afferents. Afferents can be n number of things because they can be muscle spindles, they can be 2 muscle spindles 2 as in 1A afferents, 2 afferents, 1B which is Golgi tendon organs, they can be cutaneous receptors, they can be you know thermoreceptors, they can be uh, by the way when I say afferents sensory information right, it can be an auditory afferent I can hear. Uh, it can be uh, an afferent that is uh, visual that can be a flash of light it can be anything. So, so the afferent source of the pre programmed reaction can be auditory visual or any other or any other modality. Note it can also be vestibular what does that mean that means there is a change in the posture right I can be just pushed a little uh, my posture can vary. So, my posture of the head with respect to the ground or with the rest of the body if, the, if it varies then there is going to be an immediate corrective mechanism right. So, it can be vestibular it can be any other modality it can also involve uh, the one year afferents to cutaneous receptors etcetera that does not mean that we are ex excluding them from the source of afferents, but in this case the response can also be triggered by auditory and visual and vestibular and other senses that are not discussed previously previously we only discussed the case of 1A 1B and 2 and so on ok. So, can be provided by proprioceptors which is muscle spindles uh, and Golgi tendon organs right a flash of light or by a loud tone, but remember that uh, signal must carry sufficient information to distinguish as to what the trigger is right. So, it need not tell me is of course, it, it is not the response is not going to change with the amplitude of the stimulus, but there must be enough information for me to distinguish it from other stimuli. Is it asking me to go in that direction or that direction I need to be able to distinguish that otherwise there will be no reaction there will be only be confusion. So, as long as there is sufficient information this acts as a switch and then that switch or trigger is recognized and then a response is uh, you know facilitated. An example uh, the classic example is the case of uh, the grasp reflex right. Suppose there is the cup and you are asking an individual you are asking a person to you know hold this cup I mean uh, keep your hands in such a way as if you are going to hold the cup, but do not hold the cup just keep the uh, very close yeah closer than that yeah very close like that right. Now, at uh, less than 1 centimeter right at uh, you know less than 5 millimeter I am keeping the fingers. Now, suddenly you know pull the hand through a motorized system or something when you do that right. For example, what usually happens that people grasp this object actually it is not an, a better example is a better way of doing this is ask the people to do this right just make a load noise boom like that people will grasp this you did not ask them to grasp that you just said keep the hand as if you are going to grasp there is a difference between keeping your hand as if you are going to grasp and actually grasping 
when you are keeping the uh, of course there must be an element of surprise right that is the perturbation if i know that this is going to happen if i know that you are going to say boom then you know i will decide not to react or uh, so that means i can change this depending on instruction or intention i know you know that you are going to say boom in that case i will not react if i decide not to react it depends on intention and instruction so that means it must somehow involve ca cortical uh, loop but not clear still a uh, matter of uh, debate so if i keep the uh, hand very close and you know disturb in some sense like for example say make a loud tone or a loud noise people will immediately grasp what that means is that the we are pre programming the the hand and fingers to grasp the object if needed and then we are bringing in a perturbation that perturbation acts as a trigger to grasp and then they uh, grasp it even though there is no instruction by the way this should not be you know uh, predictable by the subject i should be able to distinguish the stimuli but i should not know what the uh, you know future perturbation is if i know what the future perturbation is then there will be no surprise so so that is uh, the other feature ok. Now, what happens if the perturbation occurs during a you know during a movement if uh, let us remember during a fast voluntary movement what is the pattern of EMG we said what is the pattern of EMG we call this as the triphasic EMG in one of the previous classes we have discussed this that is the case in which the agonist fires first and the in the middle of the movement the antagonist fires and then later the agonist once again fires to produce a movement like that right a displacement profile like that is it not this is something that we have seen we call this as the triphasic EMG pattern ok. Um, now, if a person is performing a movement and a perturbation is applied right like that. So, that is the perturbation the arrow mark says where the perturbation happened then the responses are seen at a latency typical of pre programmed reactions. So, that distance that uh, time is 80 milliseconds. Now, importantly it is not, but it is not stereotypical in the sense depending on the depending on what is the direction of the perturbation the response will vary. So, the activity of the muscle that acts against the perturbation increases which is what is shown in the bold lines here that is the response of the muscle that is acting against the perturbation. So, if this muscle is acting against the perturbation its activity will increase while the activity of the muscle that is assisted by the perturbation which is this muscle decreases earlier it was this now it has decreased reduced earlier the muscle that was acting against had that amplitude now the perturbation has happened its activity has increased. So, the response is not uh, stereotypical it is context specific. So, generally this is what uh, happens ok. So, what are the features of uh, the pre programmed uh, uh, reaction? So, some of the features to remember are it is uh, strongly controlled by instruction or intention it is strongly influenced by what the instruction is. If you tell the people to not react for example, the response will be very different and subject a person can pre program any function. So, anything can be pre programmed and uh, and amplitude does not correlate well with uh, the the response amplitude does not correlate well with uh, the stimulus amplitude ok. Now, what else we will see what else is there in pre the next class. So, we have seen what are pre programmed reactions in this class and we have said that it is not a stretch reflex we have said that the afferent source of pre programmed reaction can be anything can be the um, vision can be auditory can be vestibular uh, 
can be any other afferent source. And uh, during movement perturbation, the muscle that is acting against the perturbation, its activity increases, the muscle that is acting along with the perturbation, its activity decreases. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of this class, we will continue in the next class. Mm -hmm.